Hi there. So in this part, we're going to have a quick chat about how materials work in Corona. We'll go over the different kinds. Um, and like I said, this is just basically intended to get you started uh, as quickly as possible. I'll show you what I've got here. It's just a very basic scene. Um, nothing major with a few lights in it. Lights will be for the next video. Um, so we'll get into those. But um, I just wanted to set the scene up so we had something to render. Uh, just some teapots, nothing special. We're going to look at all the different kinds of materials we can make um, and how to approach some basic ones very quickly. So to open that, uh, to start with that, sorry, uh, we're going to open our material editor. And with our renderer set to Corona, this is obviously important, um, with it assigned to Corona, we'll have access to the Corona materials and they'll actually render properly. So I'm doing this off the top of my head, so this could take a little while. I'm going to take my time and explain this properly. So, uh, you know, just follow along, maybe pause it real quick, grab a coffee or whatever, and uh, then we can get started. So with our materials, uh, sorry, with our renderer set to Corona, we see an extra Corona tab appearing uh, as you would with most other renderers, uh, mental ray, V ray, other things. Um, so our basic material here would be the Corona material. This is the one we're going to get into the most. I'm going to open close this map browser so we have more space to work with. Now, the first thing you might notice is as I double click this preview to make it a little bigger, is that you get a different kind of preview than what you're used to in 3ds Max. Now, this is one of the features of Corona I really, really like. Um, basically, this is the full render engine rendering just a sphere or, you know, you can put in any type you want. Uh, if you go to the older material editor, you can put in your own models and everything. So if you want like a, a spike ball or something like that, or something that really shows off all the different curves, then you could use that. But for now, I'm just going to leave it a sphere. And what it does, so it's a full rendering, uh, full rendering of the actual material you're making. So there's a couple of lights in the scene, which gives you a really, really nice feedback about how it actually looks. Now, something else you might notice is that it's quite grainy. Um, not wanting to go into render settings just yet. If you go to perform, no, let me have a quick look. I always forget where this is. Yeah, system. Then you can see there's custom previews here, so you can enable or disable them, and you can up the quality. Now, if I up this, to say, 10, and I update the preview, then you see it'll take a little longer. Um, also, if you have a bunch of materials in there and your preview quality is really high, then it'll update quite slowly. You might want to turn off auto update. Um, but yeah, I just usually leave it at one. It doesn't really matter to me that it's too grainy, uh, but it's just nice to know that it's there. Now, I'm gonna update this real quick again. Now, what I'm not going to do is get into any more of the render settings. Um, basically, this scene has been left to completely, I think, yeah, completely def default render settings. Um, I'm not going to get into it this video. This is for the other video. Uh, so we'll just look at the materials and keep going. So looking at the material here, I've got all the different options. Um, obviously, diffuse, uh, we can have color and a map and a level. Makes sense. Translucency is its own slider. Uh, it works quite well, actually. It's a lot easier to um, get right than I find in Mental Ray. Um, but that's just me. I mean, it's all, you know, the way you work with things, obviously, and what vibes with you. So translucency on and off. Obviously, you can have maps in there. We can have different um, different values. And the nice thing about it as well, if you were to throw a map in this slot and go down to translucency here, you can actually mix the map and the color that's in there, uh, which is nice for, like, foliage and other things. Then, next part, we have reflection. So let's turn this up. Uh, I'm going to turn reflection up to one, just max it out. And you can see you actually get a really, really nice feedback of what's going on. Let's change the diffuse color to something more red. And I'm going to throw it onto my teapots. Actually, before I do that, we'll render real quick. And I'll show you what's going on in the scene. So this is a scene without any materials. I just got a white background and some gray teapots. Um, cancel that. Let's see what happens when we throw this on. So in render, there we go. As you can see, if I bring up my materials next to um, the render is when you look at this, I mean, the feedback is just 
crazy. Like, you know exactly what it's going to look like. Um, and it's really, really nice way of working. I find myself tweaking values less and less just because of this feature. Um, because you can get it pretty spot on very quickly. So now with that material applied, let's look at all the other options. So first off, um, obviously the diffuse color, we can change that to whatever we want, turn it down. We looked at translucency. I'll have a look at that later. Um, there's a different scene I can show you with all different kinds of things in there. And, uh, or I might do it at the end of the video. I might, we'll see, we'll see. Like I said, I'm doing this off the top of my head. Um, so obviously we have our index of refraction we can change. So if we wanna really crank it up, and go up to five. We'll also get more like a metallic look, maybe. Um, realistic value. I'm just going to leave it at 0.152. And we'll look at that as we get to like metal materials and things. Glossiness, we can turn this down. So if we turn this down and render again, you'll see exactly what's going on. So our teapots are a little less glossy. Obviously, as with any render, um, almost all of these values can have a map assigned to them as well. So you can get really deep into creating your own complex materials. Um, but for now, we'll just keep running through the basics. Now, with the reflection, which I'm going to put the glossiness back up to one, so we get pure glossy reflections. Let's have a look at the refraction. And as you can see, also a really nice preview. If I render again, we'll get completely white teapots. Now this is a really, really bright scene, so it might not be very clear as to what's happening. But obviously, if we want to change the color of our refraction, what are we going to do? Um, rather than changing the color here, which will produce okay results, um, but if we want to do it properly and want to really uh, stay physically based, what we can do is go into our absorption and set a distance. So let's set distance of like 10 uh, and give it a color so maybe something red I'm gonna stick with red for now and if we render again we'll see that we get red tinted glass so while the color of the refraction works for a really really quick tint so if I turn this distance back to zero uh, as it says here absorption is controlled by setting the color that an originally white ray will have after traveling the specified distance in the medium <laughs> lower fa distance values make the effect stronger distance zero is a special value that will disable the effect completely so this is one thing as well almost all well pretty much every single value both in the render settings render settings excuse me and the material settings have tool tips in them so you can really just hover over them and get a really nice idea of what they do um which basically renders my video useless but hey you're watching anyway right no, I'm just messing. Um, so as it said, setting the distance to zero uh, basically means that you don't have any color scattering within the within the volume. Well, actually, any color absorption within the volume, which changes it to color. So I just wanted to show you, let's say we set this to pink. No, not the reflection, I'm sorry. Refraction, set this to maybe pink. And while it still renders pink it's just generally not as nice as an effect it's a really good way to do it quickly um but you know being this render being physically based as most of the other ones out there these days it's not 100 percent correct so let's cancel that and set this back to white so if we want like a pinkish shade the way we do it is set it to pink and depending on how big the distance is i'm going to set it to 100 to give you an idea of what happens this is maybe more purple than pink but as you can see it just looks more natural um, but like I said depending on the effect you want to create obviously it doesn't really matter what you use this is just to show you how the uh, absorption works then we've got two other options here which are quite important um, obviously you can set the glossiness let's set this down give you an idea and we'll get more like if a jelly feeling maybe or frosted glass as you can see the reflections are all nice and foggy setting this back to one um just to demo what's going on i'm going to set this back to zero as well to give you an idea now the first option here is caustics as it says they're quite slow so they will slow down your scene but this is a really easy one-click solution um 
compared to say mentoray uh, which is you know kind of a kind of a job getting them to work properly and fine-tuning them corona really really um, makes this process super easy you just hit caustics and if we render again as you can see around the bottom here the caustics start showing up um, this might not be the best scene to demo it but Maybe if I make a second version with the caustics off and we look at them together, then uh, you can see exactly what's going on. Render, render, render. All right, I'm gonna stop this just to have a version. We're gonna copy this, leave that one here, and turn the caustics off, re-render again. And as you can see, there's a lot less detail in the shadows. Um, there's a lot less going on around the glass. So again, if you want to work physically accurate, uh, you can use the caustics, but as it says, they're quite slow. I mean, if you look at the render time, I think they're rendered about the same time. If you look how little noise there is in this one compared to this one, um, it's not a huge difference, but in the long run, I guess, if you're, you know, rendering animations and things like that, uh, every minute that you can shave off obviously counts. Now, you'd wonder why why did they put this option in there? This is really great when you have a glass pane um, which actually has thickness. The caustics are off, which means it still renders quite nicely, um, but they're quite useless. You don't always need them, um, so that's why it's off by default. If you really want to go the full distance, then obviously you'll turn them on. Then the second option is thin also has to do with um, when rendering glass objects in like architectural visualizations. What this does is basically give it um, no thickness. So if you're using just simple planes as glass instead of boxes, then if you render, we'll show you what happens as well. You won't really see that much except for the reflection. Um, we get kind of a glass effect. But this renders really, really quickly. And um, that way you don't have to model individual, individual, you know, big sheets of glass you can just put two planes in there for example get reflection on them and then get like double glazing reflection without the crazy render time of having two full planes of glass in there um or two you know full planes with thickness uh, just have two planes in there which is really nice so leave that for what it is turn the refraction down again back to our red uh plastic now what we have as well is an opacity slider and obviously this is different this is like a cutout map in mental ray or uh, i think is it opacity in v-ray as well so this will just make your uh make your object transparent so if we render now we can just see through it so yeah um again Common use for this would be uh, leave textures with opacity, things like that. Um, so that's all in there. Then displacement, uh, I'm not going to get into too much. Let's see if we can throw in a really, really basic map. Um, I'm not expecting this to look good, so you've been warned. Fractal, maybe bring that up a little bit, give it some more levels. Now, displacement is something that you won't see previewed in the um, in the material preview. Obviously, uh, if you've got huge displacement maps and it takes ages to parse them and to render it, then uh, there's kind of really no point in seeing what's going on. But uh, what I really like about it as well um, is just, if you look at everything here, it's simplicity. They really tried to keep things simple. Uh, and, and really clear to what all the options do without any like hidden options and trying to tweak things and things like that. Um, it just kind of works. Um, obviously, this is, you know, a 1.0 renderer version. So as, you know, we see what the future brings and they need backwards compatibility, maybe this will get, you know, a little cluttered. But as it as it stands now, it's just really, really nice to work with. So let's have a look at the displacement. Um, so I've got my min level and max level set. You can also set a water level. So uh, this works like in V-Ray displacement as well. You can cut off the displacement uh, from, let's say, the bottom, if you're going from the bottom to the top, uh, and move all the, the, the polygons out to a certain level and then have it displaced from there. Um, but let's just leave it at the defaults, hit render, and 
there we are. We're displacing our teapot. So we don't really need much more control than this. Um, I find, well, for my things, obviously, if you look at a renderer like V-Ray, um, they have a modifier which has even more options. But I think for just quick and easy displacement, um, this is a really nice way to do it. And like I said, I'm just, this is all opinions. I mean, uh, this really vibes with the way I work. Obviously, if you're used to working different uh, in a different way, I mean, this video is just to show you how it works. So um, you can decide for yourself, obviously. Now, moving on, um, we have scattering as well. Uh, we looked at absorption. Obviously, that was to do the uh, refraction nicely. Now, scattering uh, is actually subsurface scattering. This was implemented quite uh, quite easily as well. We don't have a separate SSS shader. This is just implemented within the main shader, which is nice because it gives you a lot of uh, reflection controls as well within the shader. Um, let's see if we can get this working. I haven't experimented with all with this all too much yet. So um, if the Corona guys see this and I do something wrong, uh, be sure to comment and let people know that I totally messed up on this one. <laughs> so. First thing you have to do is uh, set your absorption as well. I'm gonna turn off reflections for now. Um, so give it a distance. Let's say we're dealing with subsurface scattering, so I don't want distances too too large. Um, let's say one centimeter to start start off with, which might be kind of a lot. And then we can set the scattering to maybe the same color as well. Um, let's go for something like a yellow shader. Let's see what we can do here. Yellow, green. Like I said, this, or orange, yeah, orangey, yellow, I guess. Set this to a similar color. Um, in the, the Corona help files, I'll mention this as well, there's different ways of doing different effects, um, whether you're doing skin or milk uh, or different, you know, different kinds of subsurface shading. And they describe the exact way of doing things. I'm just giving you a really rough overview of how to activate it. Um, but yeah, it's all got to do with how the refraction works. Um, you can use opacity as well. So if we turn that down, um, we get a really like more volumetric type of shader. There's all kinds of ways of doing it, but I would really recommend reading reading up on that because um, it's really, really well explained. So if we render now, I don't know if our displacement will still be active. Let's see. I don't know if I turn it off. It doesn't look like I did, so... It works with displacement as well, which is nice. And we see we get like a really, really soft shader. Um, so yeah, that's a really quick overview of how that works. Like I said, I'm not gonna go too far into it. Um, if you're doing a lot of skin shading, obviously you will be more advanced than me uh, working with subsurface shaders. So I'm gonna turn this back off, get our shader reset to some default stuff. What else do we have? Refraction and bring this reflection up a little bit. Now for the last two things, I will have a look at translucency, but first I'm going to look at something else. I'm going to make a box and maybe hide these teapots real quick. Um, and with this box in our scene, move it back just a little bit. What I'm going to look at now is, sorry, not render settings, but material settings. If we open the advanced options, um, there's a couple things in there which are quite nice. Um, the first one is self-illumination, but as it says, if you want to use objects uh, which basically illuminate your scene, you're best off not using this shader. Um, there's a corona, uh, corona light material which we'll look at in just a minute. Um, but the reason I'm opening this up is because we do have a rounded corners option. This is really nice when you have very simple geometry and you don't want to spend too much time um, chamfering all the edges or, you know, adding maybe um, some edge loops for Turbo Smooth. You can just, if it's a simple object and you're doing a still or whatever, um, you can just round the corners. Now I'm gonna really, really exaggerate this. Uh, maybe set it to like one centimeter. Just to give you an idea of how it works, maybe make this bit a little bigger so we can see the edges a little better. Move it over and render this. Oh, we've still got our displacement active. So where are we? Turn that off real quick. Uh, just disconnect this. That'll be the easiest. Obviously, we don't have our smoothing groups group set properly for displacement. And as you can see, with the rounded corner set to one centimeter, I already kind of pushed it maybe a little too far. So this is really meant to do like a subtle effect. Let's try one millimeter. 
And there we are. As you can see, it's still converging, but it looks nice. The edges don't look completely sharp, um, which is exactly what we're going for in this. And uh, yeah, it's just a really quick effect. Maybe just to show you really quickly, I'll do two boxes. Uh, that's fine. Where are we? And I'll make one red one and one green one. And in the green one, we'll turn off the round corners. And then you can see the difference between the two. That's not a very nice green. That's a little better. There we are. Of course, we'll have to apply the material. And there we go again. So as you can see, especially on the on this edge compared to this edge, this is really, really sharp. And this is already starting to feel just a little bit, you know, a little bit rounded off. Um, as I said, the effect is very, very subtle. And it's not something you're you know, going to want to use to make your uh, make your cube look really chamfer than things. You're obviously just better off doing it. Um, but yeah, for objects in the background or just little details, then uh, it's in there if you want to use it. Um, there we are. I think that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, I was going to show you the uh, translucency, obviously. So for that, I'm just going to move this one backward and get a plane in here. So the translucency works really well on um, single uh, objects which has which are made up of only one polygon. So nothing double-sided, all single-sided stuff. So let's have a look at our corona material and just up the translucency. I'm going to turn the diffuse off to zero. Not that it, that it makes any difference because the translucency are already set to one, so it will override it. Let's change the color. Maybe give it like a yellowy color. And I mean, this is a really extreme example, but it's just to show you how it works. Um, yeah, I've put it onto our little plane. And as you can see, you can see the um, the box in the back kind of shining through a little bit. And uh, translucency effect is working. So quite easy to set up as well. If we move this really close, then you'll see exactly what's going on. You get the box still shining through. So this is really nice for some basic effects. Um, again, all for single-sided polygons. So if you want to get like a really quick frosted glass look, maybe for an object in the background, and the translucency is going to be your best friend, um, rather than, you know, really modeling it out and setting the refractions, glossiness really low, and probably getting quite high render times because of that, because it's a very expensive effect. Well, this does it very cheaply. And as you can see, it looks really good. And then one last thing before I go. Obviously, we can use bump maps as well. So I'm going to delete this material. So let's just get a smoke map in there, maybe. Throw it in the bump. And this is way too much. But we have our bump here, uh, which we can turn down maybe to 0.1. Again, render. And we have a really, really, really big map. So let's turn this down. My apologies for the construction. Uh, they're actually working downstairs, so not much I can do about that. Still a bit much, maybe, but you get the picture. I mean, it's a bump map. Turn on the size even more. There we are. So we get a nice little bump effect. Maybe if we bring these teapots back and render it again, we'll see exactly what's going on. There you are. And I think that pretty much covers it. Um, all the basic functions anyway. Obviously, you've got all your map controls down here as well. Um, but I think that's pretty much it. So the next material we're going to quickly look at is the Corona light material. So as I mentioned earlier, um, this is, as it says here in the self-illumination bit, um, you don't want to use the regular Corona material to make self-illuminated objects, uh, especially if you're going to be lighting your scene. And this is just kind of added into the main shader. You're going to want to use its own. So for that, they have Corona light material. And I'm uh, just going to show you really quickly when I set this to maybe yellow and set the intensity to five. Just 
kind of go overboard or under it. And that's what we get. Okay, 5 is way too much, so let's bring it back to 2.5 and render it again. It's still way too much. As you can see, it takes a little tweaking. We also have lights in our scene, obviously. And these are casting lights, so maybe if I turn off my lights real quick. Let's see. I'll do this very quickly. Uh, maybe unfreeze everything. Where are we? There we go. Turn this one off. Turn this one off. And turn the third one off. And now we'll see exactly what's going on. So now we have our uh, objects themselves illuminate. One thing to note maybe is when we go back and look at the frame buffer, you can see there's like dark spots for where the polygons are the um, back facing. So you can have you can have a emit, emit on both sides, and uh, there we are. Just really basic, and we have self illuminating objects. So that was a really quick overview of um, two basic materials. I mean, the other ones uh, are kind of more advanced effects. I don't want to keep this kind of simple. But um, yeah, I want to thank you for sticking with it and watching the whole thing if you're still here. And um, if you've got anything to add or you want to ask me anything, just let me know. There's a comment section and uh, yeah, go nuts. So thanks for watching and I'll see you for the next videos or the next time, I guess.